Hey, what's up, guys? This is Brendan with Evoke Bike. We're back with part two with Ted King, and what a great guy to talk to. Uh, he really goes into similar topics that we had Andy Chastine on about living as a professional, what he called fit person, in this gig economy. You know, he's a professional athlete, but he's not a pro cyclist anymore. And just the different things that he's juggling to keep his business afloat, and I really enjoyed his perspective and how he's grown with social media and you know he's very social in the comments it's actually why I reached out to him and then we talk about some more micro things on his training of when he was more uh, focused on being quote-unquote dynamically active and what he uses to try to help him prioritize sleep and understanding what he teaches to his athletes about trusting the process Then we talk about a few race day observations and routines, definitely go in on his company that he co-owns, Untap, the sports nutrition based around maple syrup, why it's so good. And I eat a lot of honey, and so you might think I was not even trying to be a jackass. I was like, hey, what about honey? Is it similar to maple syrup? Obviously, there's another brand out there that uses honey. Uh, Just to preface, I wasn't trying to be a guy, just wasn't even thinking. Um, But yeah, maple syrup's better. And then talking about some seasonal flow as an athlete. You know, you don't have to be on the bike 52 weeks a year to be a good cyclist. And it's probably better if you do get off and do some other things. And then lastly, where's Ted going to be at in 2021? So Ted King, thanks again, man. This was fantastic. We appreciate you spending an hour with us at Evoke Bike. And to everyone out there listening, if you enjoyed this and found it helpful, shoot Ted a message and just be like, hey, man, thank you. And leave us a review if you could and share it with a friend. Don't be greedy with some great info that Ted dropped. All right, guys, enjoy the episode. See you later. You know, I'm trying to, what's driving you? It seems like you're big on this whole journey thing. You know, there's not just one piece of cycling that has made you Ted King today. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you have a family, which is an incredible responsibility and joy that is off the bike, but your wife's involved in the bike. Like, what do you see as how are bikes still pushing this forward? Do you just love to ride and, and, or is it, you're like, Hey, this is my kind of my career now. And it works with my family or like, or maybe you're like, dude, I need to go rip up all these gravel events and let people know who's still boss. And um, <laughs> there is, I, I'd love if your ego showed through and you're like, dude, I just want to crush people. I just want- yeah. Well, I mean, there, there is certainly 3% of my motivation is exactly that. Like if Pete Stetna was on this call, I'd be, I'd say the exact same thing to Pete because we're, we're competitors and we're friends and we're also enemies in terms of trying to get a result. Like Mm -hmm. Pete is dyed in the wall competitive. I am hanging my hat on like the, I'm having fun with this and I'm a family guy and yada, 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 but I still want to kick his butt. Right. I mean, it, it sort of like goes to your core of, okay, if you can, if you can win, throw all your cards on the table and still win, then you're, got some strength in the legs so sure that motivates me and i have to do a heck of a lot with a lot less because i don't have infinite time in the day that seemingly pete does i remember at the beginning of last year which was his first uh first year going full board gravel he's we were out in california riding together and he's like oh man this is amazing i've, I've done the biggest winter of training i ever have in my life and all i have all i do is ride my bike and i'm like dude Riding your bike is a small fraction of it. There's so much more that needs to be done in order to maintain this. He has certainly realized that and he's doing, he's excelling with it. You know, he's doing videos and he's writing stuff and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, it is a, it's a, it's a difficult job to describe. So, you know, back to the question of my motivation, I am in this, it's sort of characteristic of the gig economy to have a whole handful of gigs in order to continue to move forward. Cycling is my profession, right? Being a, I have a coworker who jokes professional fit person because I'm not really a professional athlete anymore. Um, I do some coaching I coach half dozen athletes at a time. I uh, co-own untapped, which is a sports nutrition company based on the merits of maple syrup. I'm currently surrounded by maple trees here in Vermont. Um, and then there's a heck of a lot that goes into the, the, the circus that is being Ted King professional fit person. It is being competitive. It is, um, rooted Vermont. We have, my wife and I 
host a, a gravel event here in the summer. This will be our second event, thousand person sold out event. Embracing everything it is that it is that I am is what shuttles me forward. I love being competitive. I love riding. I love racing. I love what this allows me and my family. Um, and you seem like a social dude through social media. Like that can be a lot of work for people think that all these posts just show up and that it's like, doo -doo -doo. and I like, we try and keep up with our own posts and it's like, man, this stuff in, and then you gotta do a video and then you gotta edit this thing and da, 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 and it's, it's, yeah, it's, you're in it. And so that I'm, I'm kind of glad you went down a little bit of like the business side of like you running this thing and keep, and then doing this, having this race. And there's just a lot of, I kind of forgot about it, the gig economy. Like you're juggling a lot of other things to make this ship mm -hmm. move forward with your family. That's mm -hmm. cool though. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's crazy, right? Like there are people whose, whose pure jobs are to be hired by a company and do social media. And I'm not trying to laud the merits of social media, but yeah, when I turn my phone on, I take care of King Challenge, which is our, my, the charity event that I run, Untapped, uh, which is the sports nutrition company I run. Um, my wife and I, well, she largely does Rooted. I do, yeah, there's a, there's a ridiculous amount that goes into the, and you're active in the comments, man. You reply to people. It's you don't, yeah. po you don't post and ghost. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Do, you, do you know Gary V at all? Gary Vaynerchuk. He's a big social media dude. I don't think so. Okay. Well, I won't bore you with him, but he grew his parents uh, liquor business from like 3 million to 60 million back when YouTube and everything was coming up and he has a bunch of books out. One is called jab, 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 right hook but it's like give 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 ask for the business it's basically how to grow through social media um he was a huge inspiration for me and when i left medical devices and went full-time into coaching and kind of creating this little platform that we're getting off the ground nice. and um read all his books crushing it is very good so if you ever need an audio audible book um he, yeah i'm a huge fan and if i ever meet crushing the dude, it is the name of the book crushing it is the name of the book Okay. And um, it's it's older now, but some of the tenants still uh, hold fast. And if I ever meet him, if I ever get to go see him speak, I will give that dude a hug. He 100% changed my life yeah. um, and allowed me in, as, you know, I'm not a pro and I'm like, okay, how do I get into cycling? How do I make, you know, and people always like, dude, you should go more in on coaching and da, 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 da. So, which well, is, it's so characteristic of the day and age in which we live. Like you couldn't do what you're talking about i can't do what i'm talking what i'm doing 15 years ago 10 years ago mm -hmm. and who knows what it's going to look like in 5 10 15 more it's gonna years it's going to be crazy but, dude it's going right? to be crazy yeah it's... yeah yeah what's um so you know you kind of what we're talking about you know pete riding a ton what are you doing you also post things about lifting and you're up in a, maybe what is the attic of your house or like the barn i can't remember exactly where some of the pictures come from but you're in uh, cross training as well and is um sort of maybe maybe making that up no i i would like to say that i dedicate a great deal of time to it i think there there are huge benefits to being dynamically active um good so time. thank you i just made that up <laughs> i was like i'm gonna use if, that <laughs> if in my in my cycling career my best years are when i would i would try to do it all the time and i wouldn't do it all the time if i would do dedicate 15 minutes every single day to doing primarily core work, but then also a couple other dynamic movements, like mm -hmm. a couple lunges, push-ups, et cetera. But it was as simple as doing, you know, start a clock, 15 minutes, you're going to do sit-ups. Then when you're bored of sit-ups, do crunches and then do planks and then do Russian twists and, and do all these things. There's a huge benefit to that. I wish I would continue to do that. I have a hard time manufacturing 15 minutes every day. And now with this, this gym space, you know, add kettlebells and add uh, medicine balls and just move stuff around. I think those things are awesome. It's having a, a 20 pound daughter is probably similar to that as I'm picking her up and moving totally. her all over throughout the day. I think it just maintains better life fitness. Um, so yeah, that is my strength routine. So as you, as you, you know, your daughter comes into the world, you'd mentioned time, you don't have all the time in the world to just be pro athlete. Now you're pro dad also. 
is there any small changes that you made to be like, okay, I have to cut this out or I have to optimize this time of training? Any little tweaks that you made that you've seen have helped you? I know you're, and I know it's not like one gold nugget, but just a couple of things like, oh, maybe I started riding a little bit more like this, or I stopped doing long endurance rides or things that changed. Cause there's a lot of parents out yeah, there that'll watch this. Probably a couple tidbits. One, I started using Whoop. Admittedly, Whoop is a sponsor, but when I first started working with them, their marketing director said, try this out, just take the product and, and, and see if it does anything for you. Mm-hmm. Cause we don't want to endorse you unless you're going to believe in it. And I was the biggest skeptic alive because I'd used a handful of wearable technology before. And I, I just always found it fell flat. Whoop. Like I, I nerd out every morning because I'm curious what my recovery score is in order to see how I'm going to pursue that next day or that, that day, because I'm looking at it in the morning. It helps me really prioritize sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you'll meet a lot of new parents who will say sleep when the kid sleeps. And that doesn't mean you can take a 20 minute nap every two hours, like a kid's going to do, but mm-hmm. go to bed early because you're probably going to be waking up early. So really prioritizing and focusing on sleep has been important to my wife and I, and we were, we were early to bed, early to rise anyway. So that was, that was a helpful little nugget. And another big realization is how big my aerobic engine is from 20 years of, of road racing. Mm-hmm. And I need to trust in the process. I mean, that's a, a thing that I, that, that phrase trust in the process is something that I embraced when I was racing and working with a coach. It's something that I tell the athletes that I coach all the time because we're, you know, everybody wants instantaneous results, but you're not going to get them. And it's a good thing now to remember knowing that I have this aerobic engine. So sure, I need to continue to do long rides if I'm going to be doing a 10 hour dirty Kanza, uh, unbound rather. But knowing that I can, I do have this, this big bank of endurance that I can rely on is, is tremendously helpful. Is there a way that you help athletes trust that process besides the fact it's like, yo dude, I'm Ted King. I know what I'm talking about. Um, one thing that comes to mind. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, nope, just play that card whenever possible. Do it. I realized I I totally, I failed an athlete when uh, he left in February and was like, yeah, dude, I got some other things coming up, but I've I've noticed like I was better last summer at some things than I am now. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, it's February, man. Like, did you want your one minute power like cranking right now? He's like, well, I mean, yeah, I can ride farther longer, but I don't see how it's going to help me in a race. And I was like, damn, I did not explain this to somebody. Like I didn't explain the big picture well enough to him. And I really felt like I let him down. Um, what's a good way for new cyclists when they hear you trust the process like there's gonna be a cat four out there that it's so easy now to find the group ride to just go hammer and then they you know they get good at those group rides and once the natural just because they're riding fitness wears off they're kind of like where do i go from here Mm -hmm. what do you kind of what is the process what do you think is what do you think is good for a new cyclist here as a ways to get faster I realize that's a huge general question. So take it whichever way you want. I just tell them I'm Ted King and do as I say. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it, it, with my athletes, I often have these philosophical conversations. Um, I coach a lot of people who are looking for much more general life fitness and, mm-hmm. and the bike is their, it's their fun. It's their outlet. It's their, their, you know, personal little two wheeled therapy, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to trying to continually cat up and be in the next category and win the next race. Certainly they're doing events just good. not with the, not with the regularity. So, I mean, it's almost sure. this, the exact point. Like I tell them to trust in the process to your point with those, that athlete who's like, well, where's my one minute power? It's February just always be looking bigger picture. And that's, again, that's one of the first things I tell my athletes when I, when I work with them is like cycling is this big piece of your life. I want it to fit into the entire puzzle that is your life. So Mm -hmm. be it family work, friends, whatever, like this is purely meant to be a good thing. Once it starts being too stressful, too hard to do anything, then we've, we've jumped the shark and we got to reevaluate. Oh man. That's yeah. It's really good to hear you say that. Especially I'll tell people straight off the bat, like training peaks, this calendar that you're going to see when you open your computer is not the Bible. If you have things going on or if you're feeling tired or whatever, like, and 
because there are so many metrics people think like well this must know everything about me it's like well yeah. we don't know if you didn't sleep and we you didn't you got in a fight and da, 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 da. so exactly um going a little bit more micro on race day do you have any like race routine or things that you really like to that help you just feel comfortable as a human like hey I had this breakfast or so-and-so looked over my bike or things that you just help you get to the line feeling i'm ready to go or are you more all the work's been done i'm just showing up and racing um more of the latter mm -hmm. i mean my day is guaranteed gonna start with a cup of coffee um i can count on one hand the number of days that i haven't had coffee in the past decade and it's not an obsession it probably is an addiction but you know coffee's good and i like it uh almost guaranteed that i'm gonna have some sort of bowl of oatmeal and right. that's good sustenance and add whatever to it you'd like i'm likely doing a little maple syrup and you know a spoonful of nut butter um yeah, generally, I mean, set up the bike the night before. I think controlling as many variables as early as possible is going to be helpful in order to mm -hmm. reduce that stress at the last mm -hmm. minute. Um, and I mean, that comes with 20 years of, of riding and racing bikes. And there's a lot of observation that takes place. Um, I mean, do you remember, I haven't had to literally pin a number on my back in a very long time, but I remember you know, when you first get into it and you get these big papery numbers as a cat five, you tack that thing on your back. And it's not until you notice everybody around you has crumpled their number up. You're like, Oh, okay, I'm going to do that. And then, Oh, I can crumple my number and put it on the day before and just uh, observation, you know, the whole, I'm never going to do this, per the sport perfectly. No one is going to do it perfectly, but it's this constant uh, absorption of, of what other people are doing and seem to be having success with the, to shuttle you forward yeah and that's the thing too it's um there are that's what makes the sport so amazing but also makes it so annoying at times there's so many little things that can go into it that you really do have to uh steven ba steven Bassett comes up in the conversation again he said like it's not that you had this perfect magical day where everything went well it's like only 20 percent of the stuff went wrong and the other guy had 30 percent go wrong and like you got <laughs> and i was like uh -huh. okay uh -huh. but yeah um what do you think so you've got untapped and as you has anything in your like your nutrition regimen changed um and tell us a little bit more about untapped what you guys i looked through some of the products but some things that are like that are the maybe your most favorite products that people should try out when they first go to the website and like man i don't know what to buy first sure uh, um excellent question because it does sort of cover my whole time in the sport. I mean, when I, when I, and actually hinges off the last question well too. Yes. When everybody is, you go to, to a race and you see everybody's pockets are chock full of gels, gel, 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 gel. Okay. I need a gel. And so I, for the, for my entire cycling career, I was taking the traditional sports nutrition that any other pro cyclist was taking. And often, you know, the stuff that we're being sponsored by. And so you just, chalk your pockets full of brown rice syrup or maltodextrin or whatever the heck the product is. And, you know, there's the 10,000 hour rule. I say my 10,000 gel rule. I, I had realized that I've had too many gels and I no longer wanted a gel in my life because maple syrup is delicious, nutritious, easier to take down, unadulterated. It's not a central carbohydrate with a flavoring agent with potentially a coloring agent and then a bunch of supplementation it's one ingredient and so from that realization and teaming up with uh, a family of olympic alpine ski fame here in vermont we started this company called untapped and even when you go to the sports nutrition aisle you see a lot of all natural products there's a, when you flip the, the, the product over and start reading the ingredients, there's still a lot of things that are hidden in ingredients. For example, citric acid. You'll often see citric acid in anything that tastes like lemon, like a lemon drink mix or a lemon gel. And citric acid does taste like citrus and does taste like lemon, but it's actually made 99.9% .9 of the time by fermented corn. Mm. So when you have your lemon product and you have the taste of lemon, but it's actually from fermented corn. You're like, that's kind of weird. I'd rather just yeah. have lemons. So in our lemon black tea maple aid, for example, like our ingredient list is always going to contain stuff that you can understand. 
-hmm. maple sugar, lemons, black tea, and sea salt. That's a carbohydrate, electrolyte enhanced, and caffeine with a black tea uh, drink mix. That um, sounds really good. That might super be super good. That's it tastes gonna be like my first. Yeah. Us. Oh, it's amazing. Um, another product is ginger maple aid. So ginger can be a little bit polarizing, but ginger also has this naturally settling effect on your stomach. So if you have mm -hmm. upset stomach, you're going to want to take ginger. Mm -hmm. Maple and ginger are an awesome taste profile uh, working together. So we have a drink mix that's maple sugar, ginger, and sea salt. Again, settle the stomach, electrolyte enhanced with the sea salt, a bunch of nutrients with the maple syrup or maple sugar. So it's been a blast creating this company. We started with crowdfunding at the 2013 Tour de France, blasted through our, uh, our goal, which allowed us to, to create the first product. Um, we have four energy packets, what the rest of the world would call gels. We have six waffles, Stroop waffles, because when I'm racing in Belgium and living in Europe, you see Stroop waffles everywhere. But every time I'd see one, I'm like, why can't we just put maple syrup in it? It's a waffle. So we're the only company using pure maple syrup in our waffle and two drink mixes. So the best way to say, go try something, I'd say go to untapped.cc and check out the sample pack, which Ooh. is literally one of everything. Awesome. Free shipping. And you're going to discover that you have a new favorite sports nutrition company. Can people get this internationally? Uh, this yes. In fact, we have... Oh, man. I think we can ship to any country except the UK. And that's because oh. the UK, with their recent eviction from uh, the EU with Brexit, there's this permitting that, that disallows us to get into the UK. But yes, you can go, you can ship anywhere in the world. Sorry, UK. That's sorry, actually where friends. our second most followers are at. So we'll, sorry to disappoint you guys. Well, come to North America and pay us a visit and ship yourself something there. There you go. Question. So a lot of the stuff like, um, you know, people get really into, hey, if I have maltodextrin and fructose or two types of carb carriers, I can absorb more carbs. Is that within the untapped line? Is there? The brilliance of untapped is in its simplicity. Mm -hmm. So maple syrup is primarily sucrose which okay. when you consume sucrose, it breaks down your body as fructose and glucose, giving you the exact thing that you just said, basically this double pathway of energy. Um, it is the number of messages we receive, especially from runners, because I think they're a little bit more prone to gut rot. Mm. But the number of messages we see, receive to say, hey, thank you so much for creating your product. I no longer have gut issues as soon as I started taking Untapped is that's probably the number one message we receive. Um, it's, it, it's, it can be not counterintuitive, but you don't, it's sometimes difficult to make that leap from maple syrup belongs to my pancakes to maple syrup belongs in my sports nutrition. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it will change the way you think of nutrition. Is honey similar? Do you know, does that break down in a similar way? Honey. So if there were a sports nutrition company out there that were founded on honey, hypothetically in their waffle, for example, honey is their third sweetener. Okay. Because so, yeah. they're using other sweeteners as supplementation. Um, honey does certainly have some benefits. It is not the same glycemic index. It's not the same nutritional benefit. I mean, maple syrup is a categorical superfood, And by that, I mean, it's loaded with a ton of antioxidants loaded yeah. with amino acids, loaded with electrolytes. It's, 54 on the glycemic index, which is technically low. So you have this sort of slow, long, prolonged burn. Um, easy to ingest, digest. It's just, it is this magic food, for lack That's, of a better term. Where in Vermont are you? We're in Richmond, which is just outside of Burlington. Okay. Um, My, sort of smack in the Green Mountains. Okay. My husband's brother has a maple syrup place up in somewhere outside of Mont. Uh, Montpelier and so he's right down the road okay awesome I can't remember what the name of theirs was he bought it from this family like maybe 15 years ago but he was just talking they're trying to downsize and yeah he's just talking about the projects of like walking through hundreds of trees and checking the tubing and da da da, da. and I was like God, sure. I gotta last time I was up there was Green Mountain and uh now that I'm in Tennessee I'm 
heading east to North Carolina in, in the fall. So maybe I'll make it back up that way at some point. But uh, it's mm -hmm. um yeah, beautiful part of the country. I mean, mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. that follow you on Instagram see some of that, the rides. I don't I still get a little like uh, not timid but a little scared of seeing the snow that's why i moved but you seem to love it and embrace it and that's um yeah that's it's good. been a good not uh it helps dictate my seasonal flow of things you know i can't i don't want to be living on a bike six days a week 52 weeks a year um it was snowing this morning it's a beautiful day outside right now but we had a gnarly windy blizzard roll through for about 30 seconds and now it's sunny and 60 degrees so last question for you, um, 2021, where can people's, what races might you be towing the line if COVID, are you, where are you at? Like, will you be able to get vaccinated and race later? Are you kind of, what's your trajectory for this year with it? Being My hope is to be vaccinated year? soon. That's the trouble of being a relatively young, healthy individual is you're not mm -hmm. tip top the list, which mm -hmm. is A-OK. -okay. Um, my wife and I have some projects that'll take us to California. We do some work in Sonoma County, which is a pretty awesome place to spend time in the spring. So we'll be there middle of April through middle of May. Um, Gravel Locos is an event in Texas, May 22nd. I'm gonna be lining up there. Uh, Unbound is, yeah, that's on my to-do list. Um, I've got some unfinished business there. I wouldn't say unfinished business. One of your questions earlier is what what am I most proud of? And honestly, I'm, I'm quite proud of not just winning at that point, Dirty Kansas, but being a multi-time winner is pretty, yeah. pretty darn neat. I was I think, surprised you didn't bring that up at all, but I was like, oh, maybe it doesn't. Well, that was, that was where I took my tangent. I went <laughs> elsewhere and then I forgot about the original question. It was a great question. Fair, uh, fair. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah, truth be told, I would love to win a third time. Uh, I think that would be awesome. I've got this hoping and assuming I finish it, that'll be my fifth, which would allow me to join the thousand mile club, which is pretty darn neat Big. there. Yeah. Um, Rooted Vermont, the event that we host August 1st, that's a big one. Yep. Best ride, our friend, just Sarah and Sam Boardman out in Montana have an event in late August. Okay. Um, it is, it is a cool honor to wear the number one number plate. And so I'm technically given the absence of 2020 racing I'm, I'm the winner of SBT, the reigning champ. So it'd be nice to go back to, to steamboat this summer. Is that Gucci gravel? Is that like very tame gravel or is that like gnarly at all? Cause I still, I know to... they've, they've added a, a more gnarly section. I mean, yeah, it was, it's tame. Okay. In, in a similar way that there's tame gravel around here. Like our event is relatively tame until you go on the off-road section. Okay. Cause I, I just, I actually forgot to, uh, Frank Overton was on and he was telling me that I need to come out to do SBT. He's like, dude, it's a good course for you. And I was like, dude, I did Oregon trail and almost died. He's like, oh, it's nothing like that. And he oh, called no, it, Gu he like called it Gucci gravel. Yeah. And I was like, Frank, I don't know if you remember how bad I am off road. And so um, I went to, I was outside of Asheville and a guy who is a mountain biker gave me a route to a gravel ride. And I was like, dude, I ended up, like detouring off of the car. <laughs> this is so sad. I went off of the map that he gave me and just looked for roads and rode my gravel bike on the road to where the gravel started. <laughs> it was so gnarly for me. Like mountain biking at all is, I can't do it. So I really have to like vet these gravel races that people tell me yeah. I should go try where it's super mountainous and I don't want to die and I want to actually think, have fun. <laughs> uh, outside of the technical section that took you down at Mid-South, you, if you remove that section and think of the rest of the gravel there, it's not gnarly, right? Yeah, no. It's the same thing. You're just at altitude. Okay. I can deal You'd with have that. have a blast. It's, um, well, dude, this was awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. I think, don't break your computer. Yeah. Uh, shine some light on your process, where you're going will definitely help a lot of new cyclists out there. Um, hit up Ted King on Instagram. Are you still, I am Ted King. I am Ted King and anywhere else that's the website also.com yeah i am ted king.com all things i am ted king on the social media untapped.cc okay uh check out the charity ride i host kingchallenge.org .org. um i've got a podcast called king of the ride i've got videos if you search i am ted king or king of the ride on the youtube you'll find some hopefully highly entertaining videos all about this gravel thing
And are you taking on any more athletes right now if people want to hit you up? Uh, I've heard the funny joke that a coach will always take on more athletes. I took one on about two weeks ago, and that, that has me pretty much at capacity right, right this, this moment. Okay. Well, second best. Hit us up at Evoke Bike. There you go. All right. Yo, man. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great rest I appreciate of the week. it. I appreciate you, well. you. See you, dude. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. And that's a wrap with Ted King. Thanks for stopping by for watching this interview. Check out the whole series. Email me if you have questions on anything training related. It might become a cat for a question. Check out that series and tell a friend about what we're doing. And hope you have a great day. Good luck with your training. And hopefully see you IRL at an event this year. Stay safe. See ya.